Joe Biden's got another brewing international crisis on his hands, growing fears of escalation between the U.S. and Russia after Putin downed one of our drones. A Russian fighter jet brazenly harassed the craft for over 30 minutes, dumping fuel on it and then crashing it into its propeller. The United States military then forced to ditch it into the Black Sea. Moscow accusing America of an act of provocation, warning Biden to stop what it calls hostile military action near its borders. Seems like a pretty big deal between two nuclear powers, right? But not so fast. Joe Biden hasn't said a word about it today, and it looks like his team wants to give the Russians a pass. The message that we delivered to the Russian ambassador is that they need to be more careful in flying in international airspace near uh, U.S. assets that are, again, flying in completely legal ways, uh, conducting uh, missions in support of our national security interests. I think the best assessment right now is that it probably was unintentional. It probably was the result of uh, profound incompetence on the part of one of these uh, Russian pilots. Republicans say the incident's yet another instance of Joe Biden acting weak on the world stage. Pissed off. I mean, let's just be honest about this for a second. The report coming out of our government is that this was an unprofessional act and environmentally unsound. They shot down a United States war plane. They took it out of action. And that's the response we get back. This is yet another dangerous provocation by Russia brought about by years of President Biden's weakness. President Biden. You're the Rodney Dangerfield of world leaders. Nobody respects you. And if you don't change your game and up your game, we're going to have World War III. The Pentagon also trying to calm things down and promise the Russians got nothing of value. As far as an act of war goes, I'm not going to I'm not going to go there. Incidents happen um, and and uh, clearly uh, we do not uh, seek armed conflict with uh, with Russia. It probably broke up. Uh, there's probably not a lot to recover, frankly, uh, as far as uh, the loss of anything of sensitive uh, intelligence, et cetera. Uh, as normal, we would take, uh, and we did, take uh, mitigating measures. Uh, so we are quite confident that whatever, uh, whatever was of value is no longer of value. And so, Dana, what do you think the right course of action should be in a situation like this? Well, I think that the cooler heads are prevailing at the White House and at the Pentagon and that that answer is really good. You don't know what's happening behind the scenes, and maybe there's more to that story. I think a couple of things. One is... I do think it was right to ask for the declassification of the video so that it's very clear to the world who the aggressor was here. Because Putin is trying to say that it was the United States. Well, let's show the video. Let's show exactly what happened. And also when they said there was nothing done, well, it was $32 million worth of equipment. I mean, that's, no, that's a lot for uh, people. I know it's not in the big scheme of the Pentagon budget, but it's still a lot. So I would push back hard on that because I don't think it's right to allow Russia to dictate new rules of engagement in international waters because that's not good for us. It's not good for us when it comes to China or any other international conflict. So I think that part is good. The other thing, I think, is that Putin wants this to look like it's escalating, but not actually have it escalate. So the reason would be because he's got a situation that where he's having a hard time beating a ragtag military in Ukraine. And on the other side, you have Ukraine that would like us to do more, but we can't allow them to stir the pot and drag us into something as a third party. So I actually think that right now, given what we know, that the White House and the Pentagon, cooler heads prevailing, being smart. But one thing I loved when President Trump was in office was nobody knew exactly what he would do. Right? In this case, it's like, we're pretty sure everybody knows what's going to happen here, which is nothing. nothing. <laughs> um, but they weren't sure when President Trump was in office, because you can imagine even the back channel would be, don't you ever do it again. Right. Or we could be doing things behind the scenes, cyber or espionage, which we might not even know about. Well, that stuff is going on all the time. But, you know, what's interesting about this is that, you know, they're trying to establish themselves as a people, the Russians, as they have control over the Black Sea. I mean, we've already established it's international waters. We've been operating there for, what, 15, 20 years. No one owns it. That's number one. Number two, uh, many of our drones, and I spoke to several people from the military today, have sidewinders. Our rules of engagement prevented us uh, from using a sidewinder because we were never in danger. Our drone was unmanned, all right? So this is the Russians trying to look tough. At the end of the day, 
what our drones are doing there is we are providing significant intelligence to the Ukrainians about where the Russian troops are. So we may not want to admit it, but we're already in the middle of a war. And right now, with respect to the Ukrainians, uh, if if they get the, what is it, the M1A1 Abrams tanks, if they get the new Leopard tanks that uh, are now in Poland, and the Chieftain's tanks from the Brits, and they show up on the battlefield, all these countries have promised it, game over. And so I heard General Keene today, he said something I thought was good. He said, you know what? Fly drones over that area again and again and again. Don't let them think that they have the power over us because they absolutely don't. Give us the communist perspective. Oh, my gosh. Ah. I, ha pink. I have to check my email first because the talking points came in late today. Okay, um, <laughs> so I'll just go with what I want to say, okay. um, which is that I agree wholeheartedly with Dana on the point about the cooler heads prevailing right now and would just add to that that when you hear Senator Rounds talking about this is because Biden is so weak. Um, Lindsey Graham has been going scorched earth about this. The reason that this is happening is actually because Biden and the U.S. and the allies of Ukraine have been so strong because they're defending mm -hmm. Ukraine at this level and they're supplying with the, them with that level of aid and the weapons that they need. And so Russia is angry at us and needs to do something. They need to do something that's not going to start a war, right, that's just going to keep pissing us off. And I hadn't heard right. General Keene, but that sounds right to me. Just keep going back and back and back. And it gets back to 2014 with the annexation of Crimea, where they're going around again saying, well, it's our territory. It's not. And when we see what happens at the end of this war, we'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll have a very different picture of it. But to the point about, and I've heard it elsewhere about, you know, what would be happening if it were President Trump doing this? President Trump and listening to uh, Governor DeSantis talking about what he would be doing in terms of Ukraine, would not be standing with the Ukrainian people in the way that Joe Biden is and the leaders of the, the Western alliance. And it would be a very different picture, but not in the good direction. So Vladimir Putin wouldn't have to be going after our drones because we would have, I guess, forced Zelensky to cede more territory. That was his, uh, in the beginning, he said, just give them a few things, no big deal. Give them the Donbass, et cetera. Well, how dare and you politicize yeah. this, Jessica? Uh, what? I think I think Trump's argument would have been that this no. would never have happened on his watch. But, but let's, it didn't. Let's, <laughs> well, the point. let's get Greg in here. You were saying in the green room, make love, not war. I say that all the time, including in the bedroom, Jesse. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, 32 million for a drone. Anderson Cooper must be calling his agent. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to uh, clearly Joe Biden is in the pocket of Putin, right? Or else really? he would have reacted more strongly. I'm just using the left-wing talking point. Mm -hmm. um, because I, believe... I didn't give it to you, yes. so you had to Well, no, well, actually, DeSantis thing is interesting because he was saying earlier that this was a territorial dispute, yeah. which he's not wrong. And we pointed, that out, we pointed that out when it started. However, it doesn't matter anymore because if you walk away from this uh, war, the Ukrainians will be crushed, right? But if you stay with it... Two years, four years, ten years. You got Afghanistan, maybe. People clinging to planes. It's a no-win situation for us, unfortunately. And that's where we are. So I think that DeSantis can say that. But once he gets into power, he's probably... And, and if this happened under Trump, I, he would, you would end up either having to make this really, really stark decision. And right now, this is not a big deal. This is silly. Why is, I don't understand ramping up this thing. Mm -hmm. We're in a proxy war right now. We supply arms and intel. I don't care if it's a close pass, if they sprayed fuel, if they harassed the plane. You know, call HR, for God's sake. There's nobody on it. They had a press, they had a press conference for a damaged propeller. We've been pretty lucky that all that's happened in this war to us are the fighting of other people. You know, what do you, you don't want an escal escalation out of this. You already got billions of dollars. What are we going to do? We're already supplying the, 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 the arms. So, uh, you know, I, I think we're lucky. This is when I look at this, I go, if this is what we got to worry about, we're okay. But I, you know, how long will this go on? Well, we're lucky and we're smart because we have an unmanned drone up well, there. We're not putting any of our air I, guys at risk. I do wonder if it had been manned, if it wouldn't have happened at all. I don't think Probably they would have touched not, it. Because he doesn't want an escalation. U.S. pilot, absolutely. Nope. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.